So I'd like to introduce first order differential equations with slope fields. And all that slope fields are is a graphical way of producing a solution to a first order differential equation. The general form of a first order differential equation can be written as y prime is equal to a function of x and y. And when we solve this equation, what we're solving for is the unknown function y, which is a function of x. So assuming you guys have a calculus background, what y prime is, is really just a slope. y prime is the same thing as dy dx, the change of y with respect to x, or just the slope. So in this lesson, we're not going to use calculus yet, but instead we're going to solve these first order equations graphically. And we're going to do so using what's called a slope field, which is basically just a plot of the slopes at any given point x comma y. So we can take a first order differential equation and express it in this form right here. So this is equivalent to saying the slope at any given point x, y is equal to f of x, y. Because our first derivative of our unknown function is equal to f of x, y. So for example, let's consider the first order differential equation y prime plus y is equal to x. So we can solve for y prime, and we get y prime is equal to x minus y. So what this means is that the slope at any point x comma y has to be equal to the value of x minus the value of y. So what I can do is I can come to a plot like this, and I can just start plotting slopes at, at random points. For example, at the origin, which is 0 comma 0, I get y prime is equal to 0 minus 0, which is equal to 0. So I can come in here and I can plot a vector with a slope of 0. And now we can consider the point 0 comma 1. So when x is 0 and y is 1, we get y prime is equal to 0 minus 1, which is equal to negative 1. So here we have a negative slope at the point 0 comma 1 right here. And we can continue picking points and drawing our vectors and we'll see that as we go along the y-axis while x is 0, the slope vector just decreases. And as we come down the y-axis, it'll look like a mirror image going like this. Now let's move over to where x is equal to 1. So when x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 0, we get y prime is equal to 1 minus 0, which is equal to 1. So we'll see that at this point, we have a slope of positive 1. And as we increase in the y direction, this slope will decrease because we are subtracting the value of y. So at here, we would have a value of 0. And then here would be right like that. And we'll start decreasing like that. And when we go down the x-axis, we will increase more. So right here, we'll have a slope of 2, and so on, and so on. And what about when x is equal to negative 1? So when x is equal to negative 1 and y is equal to 0, we get y prime is equal to negative 1 minus 0, which is negative 1. So at this point right here, negative 1 comma 0, we get a negative 1 slope. And like before, whenever we go up in the y direction, our slope becomes more negative. So right here, we have a slope of negative 2, and then negative 3, and this just keeps on getting more negative and negative. And when we start going down in the y direction, our slope becomes more positive. So right here, we'll have a slope of 0, here we'll have a slope of 1, and then 2, and so on. So believe it or not, we have just partially solved this differential equation. I can take any point along here, like this point right here, and I can draw the actual solution to this equation right here. And the reason why I can do that is because we know what the slope of our unknown function is at each point. So our actual function, the actual function that we are searching for or solving for, is going to be tangent to each of these vectors. So if I were to come in the negative x direction, the function would look something like this where it lies tangent to each one of these vectors at the points that we evaluated the slope at. So it would look like something like that, and then would continue up here. 
And I could continue plotting vectors in, in both directions along the x-axis, and we would get a more accurate answer. But I just wanted to show you that whenever we begin solving these with calculus, this is essentially what we are doing. We are finding a function that we don't know, which in this case is y, and we're fitting it with the information that is given, which is y prime. And let's say that I started down here. Well, if I started down here, my function would look something like this. This line, one, and this line, the second line, are obviously not the same line, but they are both valid solutions to this differential equation. In fact, we could draw a bunch of lines. We can start anywhere we want. We can start all the way up here. And that could be a solution because there's an infinite amount of solutions to a differential equation. However, there's one piece of information that we need in order to reach a unique solution, and that's what is referred to as an initial condition, which would be something like y of zero is equal to zero. Now, if we knew this piece of information, we can say, all right, we know all three of these lines that I have drawn are not the right answer because these functions do not pass through y of zero equals zero. So that's saying that at this point, the function has to pass this point. So if I extend this line out within the slope field, the actual solution to this differential equation given this initial condition is this line right here that I just drew. So let's say that I have this slope field. And let's say that this slope field was produced by evaluating some function f of x, y. I don't know what that function is, but let's say that we evaluate it like we did in the previous example and we got these vectors in the slope field. And now let's say that our initial condition that accompanies this equation is y of zero is equal to one. So this means that the function must pass through zero comma one, which is this point right here. So since I already evaluated the slope field, I can plot the actual solution to this equation. So we know that it's tangent at this point, and then we can reason that this will probably come up here and become tangent to this slope, and then it would level out to a zero slope right here, where it would stay and continue. And if we go in this direction, it would come down here and level off to zero slope and stay on the x-axis. So this is y. This function that I just drew is the solution to our arbitrary function that we came up with, y prime is equal to f of x, y. So this is the power of slope fields. It lets us solve these equations without even doing calculus, just because we know what the slope is at any point. And slope fields are an excellent way of categorizing stability of a function. For example, if my initial condition was right here, at this point, y of zero equals like two or something, but it was right here, then we know our solution would be tangent right here, it would be tangent, and we can see that it would just remain along this axis right here, all the way in the negative infinity direction and positive infinity directions. And we can see that everything else above and below it feed into this asymptote. If we have a function coming from below, it'll feed into this asymptote right here. We refer to this kind of asymptote as stable. Now let's say our initial condition was y of zero is equal to zero. So it passes through the origin. Now once again, our solution stays along this line right here, the, the x-axis. But we see that everything else feeds away from it. So small deviations from the x-axis can send the function going off completely in a different direction. We call this unstable. And then there's something called metastable, which would be in the case that our initial condition was y of 0 is equal to negative 2. In that case, our solution would be along this axis right here. But we see that everything above feeds into it, which is good but everything below makes this function diverge. So we call that metastable. 
or semi-stable. And these concepts are important because it gives us ideas of what a steady state is. So steady state is defined when a function is not changing anymore, meaning that the slope of the function is zero. And all three of these cases that I showed you, the function is at steady state because the function isn't changing at all. But we see that small deviations up or down can either be dangerous, meaning that it goes into a completely different direction or different area, or it could be stable. It can just feed right back into itself and remain along the asymptote. So let me label this real quick. Y prime equal to zero represents steady state, which means the function is not changing anymore. And in engineering, this kind of steady state analysis is important because it lets us analyze a system in conditions that reflect the actual operation of that system. So in the next couple videos, I'm going to set the stage a little more just to give us a little more background before we actually start solving differential equations with calculus. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.